And lest we get on our high horse and think this is unique to some other place, remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, people committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High, Christ bless. Hey, this is Captain Hoshia. Hey, look, I'm going to do a quick lesson for y'all. Uh, Ten minutes of truth. Hey, you know it might be a little bit more. Hey, check this out. Check this out real quick. In uh, My name is Candida Rodriguez Kingbird. I am Red Lake Anishinaabe, Ojibwe. Um, I'm here. Today is... Uh, Recording from Standing Rock, North Dakota. Today is November 14, 2016. Uh, new developments. We have had aircraft flying over our camp for several days, uh, different kinds of small charter planes, and what looks. Uh, now, check this out. Check this out right here. Uh, this sister right here is a so called Native American Indian, uh, or as we tell y'all, the tribe of Gad. Now, uh, it's been a thing going on in. Uh, I think that's North Dakota, South Dakota. It's been going on for over a month or so now. And the news been censoring it out. And a lot of y'all ain't been seeing what's been going on. But she said an aircraft just flew. They've been fighting for their land. Just like when uh, the so-called pilgrims first came over. A lot of y'all getting ready to celebrate Thanksgiving tomorrow. And man, y'all need to repent and wake the hell up. Look, look, look. This is what they done. To the Native American Indians, and they still doing it, y'all. It ain't nothing new under the sun. Check it out. Appears to be helicopters. I mean, coming through at night. Um, they mostly come at night, and they have their lights off, which is dangerous to other aircraft. They're using the space illegally. They don't have any permits or permission to be using the airspace above federal tribal land, so they're breaking the law to begin with. Last night, the new development was that there was an aircraft flying over camp or encampment from approximately one. 40 a.m. till about 2.20 a.m. this morning. Every uh, two minutes on the dot, they were uh, encircling the circumference of our camp and doing uh, what we believe to be spraying chemical agents down on top of us. This is an act of um, chemical warfare. This is an act of terror. So listen to this. this. This woman, she said they've been spraying chemical chemicals on them. And they said they believe that this is an act of chemical warfare. Now think about when the pilgrims first came. When the pilgrims first came, what they used? They used diseases. You know what I'm saying? They used small pops to wipe out lots of Native American villages. Let's keep going. Terrorism in the United States by the United States government against the indigenous peoples of Standing Rock and of this encampment. They are not reaching out to the sides where the police department has set up their uh, barriers and their blockades. So we know that they are um, strategically placing these chemicals on top of us. Um, this morning at 5.30 we came out because we heard the same aircraft passing overhead. It was actually, it was uh, verified to be a, a crop duster. And on the underbelly side of it, under each wing, there were two hoses, which they used to spray down agriculture and um, poisons on top of um, different harvests that they're growing and stuff like that. So, so you see they said they were spraying down, agri uh, spraying down poison and agriculture. I mean, you know, say on the agriculture that they was growing. But look, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, um, this is an act of terrorism. We're not going to stop. We're not going to stop. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep fighting for the people. We're going to keep fighting for the rights. This 
This, these resources belong to our children. This water belongs to our children. This is our future. These kids need this land. They need this water. They need this, this these resources, and they need us to stand and fight and protect them. Don't put this on Facebook. Uh, they'll take it back off again. So you heard what the sister said. She said, look, these children need these resources. So it's letting you know Esau, take, he had already took, taken everything that they had, had because remember the Native American Indians was already over here before Esau came. They, look, hey, this proof in the pudding, these folks, the damn devil the Bible speaks of. But a lot of y'all not even aware of this, and you about to sit down and eat them all and take up the table with devils. And um, But uh, do share this with family. Talk to your family about this. Talk to your friends about this. Spread the news out there. Let them know this is an act of genocide from the U.S. government. This is a, this is a terroristic attack. Um, power to the people, man. We're not going to stop. Stay up. Okay, Israel. Now, look, check this out. I hope y'all understand what's going on. A lot of y'all still unrepentant. You about to go celebrate this damn uh, hell of day tomorrow called Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving. And they still doing the same thing that they did to the Native American Indians 500 years ago. I want to go to Deuteronomy real quick, chapter 28. Matter of fact, I want to start with Leviticus 26. Because the sister said... This is an act of terrorism. Listen to this. I'm going to show you that they fit the curses. Because you got a lot of people saying that they are not the Israelites the Bible speaks of. Uh, let's start in Leviticus chapter 26 verse 14. It says, But if you would not hearken unto me, and would not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you would not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant. So the Most High God told the Israelites, he said, if you break my covenant, hold on, let's see what's going on. Okay, we back on. It say, but if you, uh, so the most I told the Israelites, if you break my covenant, I also would do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. Did you not just hear the sister say this is a terrorist attack? Believe it or not, Esau, or the so-called white man, is the terrorist today. He is a terror to this planet Earth. He said, consumption and the burning egg that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat them up. I mean, shall eat it. I mean, for your enemies shall eat it. So, look, let's go from there real quick. The Lamentations. Child, Lamentations. Let me see. Let me see. I'm telling y'all, man, look, it's it's really time for our people to wake up, man. We're going to go to Lamentation Chapter 5. Because remember she said they're taking their water, they're taking their resources, and their kids need their resources. Let's start at Lamentation Chapter 5, verse 1. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Remember, they thought this was their inheritance according to Second Andrews. Let's get that real quick. Second Andrews. Hopefully it pull up. Uh, let me see. Let me see. We're going to go to Second Edge of Chapter 14. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, give me a minute, Israel. Okay, let's Google. Address. Okay, y'all, we're going to go to second address. I think it's chapter 14. I ain't been here in a while. Verse. Let's go down. Second address, chapter 14, verse. I think it's 43. Okay, this wrong, this wrong. Hold on, let me see, let me see, let me see. But anyway, uh, they think this is their promised land right here, y'all. And um, just like they said, look, they they inheritance has turned to strange. And now look, this second edge of chapter 13, verse 40. It say, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. 
whom Salmanassar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves. Now the counsel that they took among themselves is when King Cyrus led all them out of captivity. Now look, y'all can go to Ezra 1. In uh, chapter 1, verse 5, that's in the, uh, not in the Apocrypha, but in the Old Testament. And you can read that for yourself. I just want to run through this. I want to make it quick. It say, but they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might dare keep their statues, which they never kept. In their own land. So they looked at this as their promised land, y'all. They said, look, they want to come here and keep the commandments. But, of course, they came here and still was in the midst of idolatry. It said, and they entered into the uh, Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half. And the same region is called Azura. So, um, remember, uh, Columbus, or uh, so-called uh, Columbus, identified Osra uh, with America, which means new land. It said, then to that they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come. So, this, this was considered the northern kingdom promised land right here. Okay, let's go back real quick to Lamentation chapter 1, I mean chapter 5, verse 2. It says, our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens, just like now. Esau is the true alien on the earth. He's the invader. <laughs> he came over here, invaded this country, and now he's telling nobody, look, hey, I don't want, I'm trying to kick everybody out. When he is not even from here. When he had even fought for his independence from Great Britain in 1776. They said, we are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. Think about uh, the tribe of Gad, or the so-called Native American Indians. This woman said they need their resources. You know what I'm saying? But he had cut that off from them. Just like now, the same with us. The Most High gave us the earth. Uh, water pulled from the sky, but uh, fall from the sky. But guess what we do? We got to drink it for money. It say our necks are under per persecution. We labor and have no rest. We have given a hand to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. So we pay for the sins of our forefathers and for our sins as well. Servants have ruled over us because, according to the promise, they're supposed to serve us. They say there is none that do deliver us out of their hand. Who is trying to deliver Gad out of uh, Esau's hand right about now? Nobody. It say we got our bread with the pearl of our lives because the sword of the wilderness. So uh, I would keep going on, but I ain't gonna keep going on. But uh, basically, you know, you remember y'all the scriptures twofold. This going into the Babylonian captivity, we know. But uh, the scriptures is nothing new under the sun, according to Ecclesiastes. Let's get it real quick. Chapter three, and the scriptures say wisdom is double. So when you read about the curse is gonna be on us for each generation, y'all. So it just didn't happen in the Babylonian captivity. It just didn't happen in the Syria captivity. Every captivity we went into, these curses going to be upon us. Uh, is, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I mean, not 3. Uh, let me make sure. Let me make sure. Verse. I mean, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. There ain't nothing new under the sun. Verse 9. It say, uh. The thing that have been, it is debt which shall be. Now, that thing is talking about man, but we'll get into that at some other time. And that which is done is debt which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. It ain't nothing new under the sun, y'all. So, now, look, a lot of people say that the Native Americans don't fit these curses, but they do. You know what I'm saying? They do. They say they just was part of Esau's wrath. No, they fit the curses, man. These folks telling you they... Being terrorized right now. 
Because Esau is the true terrorist. Look, I'm going to go to Deuteronomy real quick. I'm going to start at chapter, I'm going to start at uh, 28, Deuteronomy 28, verse 31. It said, Thy ox shall be slain before thy eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Remember, Esau killed over one million buffalo a year. He killed over one million buffalo a year to try to starve the Native American Indians out. It said, Thy ass shall be violently taken away from before thy faith. Was not they cattle violently taken away from them? It said, and shall not be restored to thee. Have you been restored to thee? No. They still taking their land. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemies. And thou shalt have none to rescue them. Have anybody rescued their sheep? Have anybody rescued their ass? Or anybody rescued their ox? No. It say thy sons and daughters shall be given unto another people. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longer for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thy hand. Believe it or not, y'all, the Native American Indians were slaves. They sons and daughters were given to another people too. It said, the fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall, shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. When, they, when uh, Esau came over here, did not they have, uh, cow, I mean, did not they have farms? Was not they plant potatoes here? They taught Esau how to grow a potato. Did not they have beans, carrots? This is what they so-called Thanksgiving all about. Esau teaching the pilgrims how to survive and stuff like that. I, I don't know. Hell, what the hell with Thanksgiving? It said, thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed all way. From looking at the video, they still oppressed and crushed. After everything had been taken away from them. So that, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thy eyes which thou shalt see. Now look, I wanna uh, go. I wanna read some real quick. This is the slave trade timeline. Man, I ain't been to this in so long, y'all. But check this out. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I wanna get straight to it. I guess I'm gonna start in fourth. It said before 1400, slave existed in Europe from classical times and did not disappear from the collapse of the Roman Empire. Slaves remained coming in Europe throughout the early medieval period. However, slavery at the classical type became increasingly uncommon in North Europe, Northern Europe and by the 11th and 12th centuries had been effectively abolished in the North. This let you know, man, look, these Edomites weren't no damn slaves. The people who was made slaves over there during that time was uh, the Jews, remember. You had Jews in the Greek captivity, and you had Jews uh, enslaved in the Roman captivity. It said, nevertheless, forms of unfree labor, such as villainage and serfdom, persisted in the north well into the early modern period and southern and eastern Europe. Classical st uh, style slavery remained the normal part of the society, and economy, and trade across the Mediterranean and the Atlantic seaboard meant that African slaves began to appear in Italy, Spain, Southern France and Portugal well before the discovery of the New World in 1492. And that's because we ruled over there, y'all. Those so-called African slaves that was in Italy, Spain, because remember, you had Jews in Rome. Paul was from Rome. Those was Jews. And they had them Jews enslaved. It said well before the discovery of the New World in 1492. Notice they call this the New World. Remember in Second Edges. Uh, chapter 13, let's get it uh, again. Uh, let me see. Verse 41. It says, But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a foreign country where never mankind dwelt. So it said they're going to go to another country, y'all, where never mankind dwelt. All right, now look, let's go back to her real quick. So it say from the eighth century onwards, an Arab run slave trade is also flourished, which much of this so that's the trans uh that's the sub Saharan trade slave trade, which much of this activity taking place in East Africa, Arabia and in the ocean. In addition, many African societies themselves have forms of slavery, although these different it say uh although uh these different considerably both from each other and from European and Arabic forms because what was going on in some of them African countries it was uh, a lot of them one okay you had some you know you had the Helmites enslaving um, 
Israel. You had Hamites enslaving Israel. And then you had other tribes that used to hire servants or use servants to pay off their debt. So that's why it says different considerably than the European Arab because they straight up doing us in. But uh, the Hamites was the same because the Hamites and the um, Europeans, the, uh, I mean the Hamites and the Arabs sold us to the Europeans. But look, I ain't going to read the rest of this. I want to get to the point, y'all. Uh, let me see. I just want to show y'all that the Native American Indians was sold on ships. So let me see. Uh, now, as you can see, they started taking Judah far back as uh, 1444. Y'all can look at that right there. Uh, I just want to get to the point. I want to just show y'all that they fit the curses and that they was on ships. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I ain't been here in a while, so y'all just got to uh, bear with me, Israel. Bear with me. Y'all know I do these shows. I come from out of nowhere. Here we go right here. It say uh, June 1496. I'm going to start at 1493. It say November 3rd, 1493. On the second voyage, Columbus again reaches the New World, modern Dominica. On this voyage, he initiates the first transatlantic slave voyage. A, a shipment of several hundred Taino people sent from Hispaniola to Spain. You see that? He was shipping people from Hispaniola to uh, Spain. Go to do them in 2868. It said, the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, for a lot of y'all that don't know, Egypt is synonymous for uh, house abundance. Let's go here. It said, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of that house abundance. Let's go right back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. So, as y'all see right here, Egypt means house of Bondage, house of bondage, Egypt out of the house of bondage. Do know twenty eight and six eight. So we're gonna replace Egypt with the word house of bondage, and we'll just read it straight through. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships or slavery or the house of bondage with ships. By the way, world, I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Talking about your homeland. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. Meaning no man is going to redeem you. Because remember if you was a servant. Your brother could have redeemed you according to Leviticus chapter 25. But we ain't going to go into that. We're going to stick with the topic. Uh, it's a, uh, on his second voyage Columbus again reaches the new world modern Dominica. On um, this voyage, he initiated the first transatlantic slave voyage, a shipment of several hundred Taino people sent from Hispaniola to Spain. There are doubts about the legality of their enslavement in Spain. Uh, December 8, 1493, Columbus founds the first European colony in the New World, La Isabella, on the island of Hispaniola, modern, modern Dominican Republic. Uh, let me see. June 8. 1496, Columbus returns from his voyage carrying about 30 Native American slaves. Once again, there are doubts about the legality of their enslavement. Okay, June 24, 1497. Okay, now I'm going to go to 1499. It said more than 200 slaves taken from the northern coast of South America by America Vespucci. So here goes, this one. This is America named out the America Vespucci. And Alonzo D. Hojeda and so apparently without legal problems and Cadiz. So they were shipping the Native American Indians, y'all. They were shipping them out. Now, look, I ain't going to read all this. Uh, y'all see the link up there. This is a slave trade uh, timeline. I just want to show you that they were shipping the Native American Indians out. They was being sold on uh, ships. Okay, y'all, this right here. Uh, this is uh, uh, the untold history of American Indian slavery. It say long before the transatlantic African slave trade was established in North America, a transatlantic slave trade in Indians had been occurring since the very earliest European arrivals. We just read about that. They was being sold on ships, y'all. 
They sons and daughters were again getting to another people. They fit the curses. It was used as a weapon of war among the European colonies and as a tactic for survival among Indians who participated in the slave trade as slavers. It contributed to the fierce decline in Indian populations after the coming of the Europeans, along with devastating diseases, uh, disease epidemics, and lasted well into the 18th century when it was replaced by African slavery. So they was being enslaved first, and it was replaced. Now... I was sitting up there. I was trying to. Uh, I was. I was trying to find. Uh, it, it was one that I found that they. The reason why they were shipping uh, the Native American Indians off because they couldn't catch them, and plus they knew the land too good, so they were shipping them off because uh, it, it was hard for them to catch them. So when they catch them, they said, "Look, we got to ship them off because they knew the land." And on top of that, you know, they were selling them. And they was uh, raping them too. Okay, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Because uh, I don't want to read all this. I'm going to read this. It says, It is very well known by historians that the slave trade began with the Spanish incursions into the Caribbean and Christopher Columbus taking up slaves as documented in his own journals. And we just read about that uh, with the uh, slave trade timeline. It says, uh, uh, Let me see, let me see. I say every European nation that colonized North America utilized Indian slaves for construction. So they helped build up the uh, Esau Empire too. Plantations and mining on the North American continent, but more frequently in their outposts in the Caribbean and in the metropolis of Europe. As the pieces of the puzzle come together in the scholarships, historians note that nowhere is there more documentation than in South Carolina. What was the original English colonies of Carolina established in 1670? It is estimated that between 1650 and 1730, at least 50,000 Indians, and likely more due to transactions hidden to avoid paying government tariffs and taxes. You heard that, transactions hidden. That's why when you was reading... Back in the 1400s, it was talking about it was a legality about the enslavement. It said, were exported. That means they were shipped by the English alone to their Caribbean outposts. Between 1670 and 1717, far more Indians were exported than Africans were imported. You hear that? Far more, because they knew the land. They had to get them up out of the land. In southern coastal regions, entire tribes were exterminated. Through slavery compared to disease or war and a law passed in 1704, Indian slaves were conscripted to fight in wars for the colony alone before the American Revolution. And notice they said they was de- died by diseases. Look, let's jump up. Do them in 28 verse 58. It say, if thou would not observe to do all these, uh, all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy place wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues, and of long continuance, and of sore sickness, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave upon thee. Think about the botch with the bumps and the boars all over you. Think about the Indians with smallpox with uh, bumps and boars all over them. It said, also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And was not smallpox or sickness and a plague, is that written in the book of the law? No, it is not written in the book of the, book of the law. Hold on, y'all. I got another one real quick. I ain't read this in a long time either. Okay. And this American Indians and slaves. It said, when the subject of slavery... And America is discussed. Many people assume that this is about thir- the 13 million Africans who were captured, enslaved, and transported to the Americas to work on um, plantations. Yet the history of slavery in America starts long before this, from the very beginning of the European discovery of the American continents. Europeans were involved with slavery, not African slaves, but American Indians. So, man, y'all, I wish y'all keep, y'all need to sit y'all ass down somewhere. For real, though, talking about that they don't fit the curses. They was on them ships, too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't want to read all this. I'm going to jump down. It say, um, the Spanish involvement in the American Indian slave trade started very early. On his second expedition to America in, in, in 1493. Did not we just read that in the slave trade timeline? 1493. 
So this thing you know, y'all, the facts is adding up right here. The facts is adding up. Okay, let's keep going. It's saying, uh, on his second expedition to the Americas in 1493, Christopher Columbus enslaved over 500 Native Americans and sent them to Spain on what? On ships. In addition to the search for gold and other riches, slavery at this time was a major Spanish objective in the New World. In 1495, the Spanish, under the leadership of Columbus, rounded up 1,500 Arawa. They selected 500 to be exported to Spain as slaves. 500 to serve as slaves to the Spanish on the island, and the remaining Indians were released. Columbus proudly boasted to the Spanish monarch about the slave potential and its economic benefits. Columbus captured and exported more Indian slaves, about 5,000, than any other single individual. You see that? Man, look, y'all crazy as hell. Look at that. By 1516, the Spanish census estimated that there were only 12,000 Native Americans in Haiti, down from an estimated uh, 8 million before the Spanish conquest and 3 million in 1496. So, they was destroying the Native American Indians. So, I'll look, go back to do number 28. I'm going to wrap it up. Verse 63. And say, and it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from out the land where the where the thou goest to possess it. So look, y'all, look, go to Exodus chapter twenty, verse three. It say, um, it say, thou shalt have no other gods before me. When you celebrate uh, Thanksgiving, you're in the midst of idolatry. Because after they destroyed our people, they gave thanks to their so-called God, which is Cesar Bunger, which is no God at all. Uh, Hebrew, I mean, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speak unto you, O house of Israel. Thus said the Lord, learn not the word of heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at, at them. For the customs of the people are vain. God said their custom is vain. One of their customs is Thanksgiving is vain. When you read Leviticus chapter 23, the Most High gave us a whole list of how holy days to celebrate. Man, it's time for our people to wake up, man, and quit following the white man holidays, man. That's why Second Maccabees, I got to get this. That's why he said y'all follow their custom so earnestly man we do this so earnestly we don't ask no questions and y'all see what's going on right now but look i'm gonna tell you what after i read this y'all i'm gonna do a part two uh i just want to do something real quick uh because i know that the, the day coming tomorrow thanks killing uh, Second Maccabees 4 and 15, not, by, not sitting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. By reason, you see that y'all like the glory of the Grecians. You like Thanksgiving. You like Christmas. You like Valentine's Day. You like their glory, the white man glory best of all. Instead of what the Most High gave us in Leviticus chapter 23, when you read about uh, the Passover, you read about the Tabernacles, you read about the first fruits, you read about all this stuff. And look, y'all, y'all can go to Leviticus 33, and you can read it yourself. You know what I'm saying? The Most High gave us the uh, first fruits, the Feast of First Fruits. He gave us the uh, Passover. He gave us the Feast of Tabernacles. He gave us the Feast of Dedication. So just go to Leviticus 23 and read this. Read all this for yourself. Going back to what we was at. Uh, let me see. It's a... Uh, Verse 16, by reason where a sore calamity came upon them, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers. So, your enemies, you want them to give you justice and peace, whose customs they follow so earnestly, and to whom they desire to be like in all things. You want to be like them. That's why you celebrate Thanksgiving. That's why you celebrate Christmas. That's why you celebrate all that BS, man. It's time for y'all to wake up and repent. Hey, look, y'all, with that, I'm going to say shalom, most high Christ bless. Matter of fact, I'm going to read y'all one more scripture in Acts chapter 3, verse 18. I pray and hope that y'all don't celebrate Thanksgiving tomorrow. Okay, Acts 3, verse 18. It say, uh, I mean 19. It say, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come, 
from the presence of the Lord. With that, child, I'm saying Shalom, Most High Christ, bless. Don't celebrate that wicked ass holiday tomorrow. Shalom. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.